Senate Missouri Nativity's Got Talent event online. And that has been posted to our YouTube channel if you missed it. It was an opportunity to see great entertainment, learn some informational things about cooking and winter car, car care. Just a great thanks to everyone who participated in that, and particularly to Quarantina, who hosted as fabulously as she always does in Nativity Has Talent. So thank you all who participated in that. As we are in the season of Advent, um, we have an Advent faith in a bag. If you have not yet received yours or would like to re, um, receive one, please just give the office a call and we'll see that either it's available for you to pick up here at Nativity or that we deliver it to you. We're also underway working on our virtual Nativity pageant, available for all of the young people in our congregation to be a part of. And if you and your young people have not yet signed up to be a part of the virtual nativity pageant, again, just give us a call and we'll get you involved in that. I noticed that December 9 is only a few days away and that's the deadline for our Girton fundraiser. If you'd like to buy gift certificate, um, gift cards for Girtons, 15% of that goes as a fundraiser for nativity. Our Christmas flowers are um, also something that you might decide to buy a Gertens gift card for. Or you may just want to donate money for Christmas flowers. There'll be just a few in the church. Um, what we are doing is delivering Christmas flowers to the many people at Nativity who have been sick um, or who just have been alone during this uh, holy time that we want them to know that we are with them in spirit. So if you'd like to be a part of that, um, your Christmas flower donation can just be given to Nativity, either by dropping it off at the office during our office hours, 9 to 2, Monday through Wednesday, um, or you can um, mail that in. Next Sunday is our newcomer orientation for anyone who has been a guest here at Nativity, and it, it's an opportunity to learn more about Nativity. It'll help you know whether this might be the faith community for you. We hope to be able to answer your questions and help you know what it uh, what is all involved in being um, an active member here at Nativity. We need some help, and so here is my weekly plea for help. Uh, snow removal, um, just if you can volunteer to uh, be on a, on a rotation of folks available to shovel a small area of sidewalk, given that we're not all coming in the building, we don't need as much snow removed as we have in past years. Um, and uh, also some office tasks. And then we have some tasks throughout the building. This is just about keeping our building uh, working and clean. If uh, getting out of, the, out of your house and coming up to church uh, gives you a bit of a break, um, there are a number of tasks that would be helpful to have folks come in and do. We never have more than 10 people in the building at a time. Always safe distancing, always wearing masks when we are near each other. So if you'd like to be a part of that, um, again, just give the office a call. We also have a meal train, and if you'd like to be a part of delivering a, a meal for someone in need, please check that out in our nativity notes as well. So much happens this time of year, Advent, Christmas, and then the annual meeting. So if you're a part of a team, I invite you to start considering what you're going to write in your annual report for the annual meeting. And we also are at that time of year when we ask for nominations. We ask people to consider serving on the vestry, the decision-making leadership body here at Nativity. If it's something you would like to do, or if you recognize the, those gifts of discerning, of listening, of leading, in other people here at Nativity, um, please consider nominating yourself or one of your fellow members. In order to nominate a fellow member, you have to have the permission first um, before you turn in the nomination form. But nominations are due, I believe, by December 15. So um, the nomination information, again, is in the e-notes uh, available that have been sent out this past week and will be again next week. Today we will be blessing our pledges for our 2021 uh, operating budget. If you have not yet turned in a pledge card, 
I invite you to still do so, and when it comes, I will still bless it. Uh, today, as a part of our service, we will bless the many pledges that have been given to Nativity, and you um, can see the update on our pledge drive in the e-notes um, that came out yesterday. So thank you, and now's a good time to go get your coffee and settle in as we begin our prelude and center for prayer.
service today with the lighting of the Nativity Advent wreath. O oh God, we light the second candle of Advent. We, see, we seek your comfort, both mighty and tender. You come prepare our hearts to be transformed by you. Isaiah announced God's coming to a people exiled in broken and parched wilderness. He declared that God's redemption would make a highway in the desert and change the rough places into plain. God would come as a shepherd, feeding, leading, and cradling the very flock. This Advent, we seek such a God. Saving God, look upon your world and heal your land and your people. Prepare us to be changed. This Advent, teach us to be tender and just as you are. Amen. Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your hearts, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life.
be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Loving God, your desire is for our wholeness and well-being. We hold in tenderness and prayer the collective suffering of the world at this time. We grieve precious lives lost and vulnerable lives threatened. We ache for ourselves and our neighbors standing before an uncertain future. We pray, may love, not fear, go viral. Inspire our leaders to discern and choose wisely, aligned with the common good. Help us to practice social distancing and reveal to us new and creative ways to come together in spirit and in solidarity. Call us to profound trust in your faithful presence, you, the God who does not abandon. Amen invite you to listen to the words from our Hebrew scripture. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God.
justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth. Justice shall look down from heaven. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. Who will prepare your way? The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
wilderness. What will we make of it? The wilderness is mentioned many times throughout Scripture. Today in Isaiah, we are told to make straight a highway for the inbreaking of God in our midst. A God who comes in the now and in the not yet. In the wilderness experiences of our lives, God continues to break in. Our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, living in the desert, they provided a space of hospitality for God, and God pitched a tent among them. The Israelites traveling in the wilderness in search of the promised land, they too were accompanied by God. And today we hear that John, out in the wilderness, is preparing the way for his cousin Jesus. Even Jesus, after his baptism, goes out into the wilderness to discern his life's call. Some of these wilderness experiences are chosen, and some are not. However, they have two things in common. These wilderness experiences are indeed wild. They offer a place for the wild imagination to determine its response to life. They offer a wild experience, which may be discerning or altogether displacing and disheartening. Second, they are never without God's presence. While not always obvious, God is always faithful. I recently watched a documentary of the last slave ship called the Clotilda. In 1860, Timothy Mayer, a wealthy Irish businessman from Mobile, Alabama, hired Captain William Foster to smuggle and transport slaves out of Africa. Slavery was still legal in the southern states in 1860, but importing slaves was, had been illegal since 1808. The captain wrote in his diary that he went and brought back 110 slaves. African tribes were at war, and the winner of the recent war in the area that is now Ghana sold its prisoners of war as slaves. I can't imagine the wilderness experience of these 110 people jammed in a cargo hold for a miserable two-month journey across the ocean, having no idea where they were going or what they would find when they were taken off the ship. I don't know who today could survive that type of wilderness journey, a journey they did not choose one they did not set out on. The sounds of waves crash, crashing against the small ship tossed about in the ocean for months. The ship arrived in Mobile under the cover of night, and the Africans were handed over to Timothy Mayer. Some he sold, some he kept for his brother and himself. Captain Foster claims that on that night, he burned and sank the Clotilda in the River Delta to hide the crime. The ship remnants were found just in 2018 when a drought had caused the river to be low. The slave ship and its slaves are the most well-documented slave experience in our country. Five years after these people became chattel of Americans, they were freed as a result of the Civil War. Without the ship as evidence of the crime, the slave traffickers were never held accountable. Once free, many of these slaves remained in the same area and worked for the same former slave owner for a dollar a day. 32 of Mayer's former slaves worked as a community to save up their money to buy land 
just a few miles from where the ship was sunk. The community they created is called Africa Town, just three miles from downtown Mobile, Alabama. This all African town had many of the same venues of any other small town in Alabama, a church, stores, a gas station, a drive-in, post office, a booming business area owned by black people, and the first black school in Alabama. By 1960, the city had grown to a population of 12,000. But much like our own St. Paul, Minnesota, Rondo neighborhood story, a freeway was built through the middle of Africatown in the 1990s, decimating the city and the lives of those who prospered there. Fewer than 2,000 people live there today, surrounded by factories and chemical plants and divided by an interstate. Clotilda was a powerful documentary of a wilderness experience not chosen, but foisted upon a people in flagrant disregard for human dignity. No doubt, God was with them in that wilderness journey. I listened as the interviewer asked questions of the descendants of these Africans, many of whom still live in Africa town. I heard the pain in their stories, but I also heard the pride that a small community of former slaves could pool their resources and build a community. One of the members founded the Christian church that still stands in that community today. Consider how these former slaves responded to a disheartening and displacing experience of unchosen wilderness with deep resilience and love for one another. One of the descendants described how her ancestors were forced over to here from a continent of Africa. She says they didn't come with empty heads. No, they came with empty hands. So they found a way to make a way. And that is what has stuck with me all week. The simple and powerful statement of a people. They found a way to make a way. We find ourselves in our own kind of wilderness experience in this worldwide pandemic. Life as we have known it has changed and it will never be the same again. And that isn't meant to be a downer, but just a statement of what is real. And the people that I am most worried about in this wilderness experience of ours are those people who expect that somehow this wilderness journey will circle us back to where we were last March of 2020. I don't know, nor does anyone else know exactly when this wilderness journey will end or where it is taking us, but we will find a way to make a way. I find comfort in knowing that our faith ancestors, and for many of us, our ethnic ancestors, not only survived wilderness journeys, chosen and unchosen, but they found a way to thrive and to carry on the mission of Jesus, to love one another. The great story of God's inbreaking 2,000 years ago in the Middle East is a story that continues to bring us hope. Yes, even today, in the midst of our own experience, take comfort in knowing that God has never left us. Advent, Christmas, Easter, the high holy days of the church have never meant to be historical reenactments. It's a now and not yet event in which God breaks into our world now, every day, and a not yet in which we wait for the coming of Christ as we and our ancestors have been promised. And here is our opportunity 
to be found in the wilderness, given the chance for each one of us to make straight a path in our hearts and in our lives for God to reign as the most important and guiding principle. We do not have to return to overscheduled lives, to competition with the Joneses, to overconsumption or materialism. We do not have to return to greed and hate and practices of disparity. In this time of isolated wilderness, we can take the time to focus on the inner landscape of our hearts so as to be changed. Where the hills and mountains are lowered and valleys are raised to create a level playing field in our hearts. This can be a time for justice making, as Isaiah calls us to do. This change in our heart is what is meant by to repent. To change our hearts and to repent our sins is to change the ways in which we live that are death-dealing to ourselves, each other, and our planet. Avoiding sin is not about avoiding God's anger. No, avoiding sin is to avoid what brings death to our connection with self, with God, and with all of creation. As Brene Brown likes to say, we are hardwired for connection. And for that connection to carry a current within it that is life-giving, it must be a connection that assures justice. Food, clothing, housing, health care, available to everyone throughout the world. In this Advent time, we get to decide Will we be like the Israelites and travel together? Will we be like Jesus, who committed to his calling in the face of wilderness temptations? Will we be like the 32 freed slaves who joined themselves together to create something new from a past they did not choose? We all know accepting and undergoing change takes work. I I actually wish it burned calories. But in 2020, we have been navigating rapid change. Our social lives are ever more dependent on telephone and other technology. And yet, I think we are all praying for change. The change that a vaccine will bring, the change to our lives at the end of this pandemic will bring, we all want that change to safely travel and to be together with our loved ones. And so in these months of what I call wildering, what will you bring with you into the new creation of post-COVID and what will you leave behind? Advent was never meant to be a spectator sport. It has always meant to be an act of conscious preparation for the God with us life to unfold. You see, we actually get to choose. So use this wildering time well, because what God has to birth in us and through us is already beginning to happen. Get clear about what matters in your life. In a time when we can all be so easily irritated with each other, we have to choose creating space for grace for each other and for every person, each and every time. Because what results in that grace is the love that is at the center of what is most important in our lives. Change is certain and inevitable. Will we be ready for it? Will we have grieved what we have lost? Will we have lamented our pain long enough to let our resistance to it go? Will our hands be freed from what we used to clutch to be open to receive something different? Will we choose to be a faith community that will be committed to a life together 
and whatever expressions of our faith that will be demanded of us. Maybe something we once felt was not palatable will become more acceptable as we learn to see things in the greater scheme of what matters. Leave room for that. Leave room for change within yourself. Within this wilderness journey of ours, take comfort. Take comfort that God is always with us as we find our way. Amen. One of the ways in which we will find our way is through the support of one, one another and how we financially support Nativity, our ministries that we do together and celebrate together. And so in our bowl here today are all of the pledges that have been turned in to this point. We take a moment to bless these pledges Generous and loving God, we come to you in thanksgiving, knowing that all we are and that all we have is a gift from you. In faith and love, help us to do your will. We are listening. Speak your words into the depth of our souls that we may hear you clearly. We offer to you this day all the facets of our lives, whether it be at home, at work, or at school. We seek to be patient, to be merciful, to be generous, to be holy. Give us the wisdom and insight to understand your will for us and the fervor to carry out good intentions. We offer our gifts of time, talent, and possessions to you as a true act of faith to reflect our love for you and our neighbors. Help us to reach out to others as you have reached out to us. Amen. And for our giving, May these gifts be blessed, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please join in reciting our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prepare us for your coming, O Lord, as we make straight your way. Feed us as a shepherd and gather us like lambs into your arms. Prepare for us for of your coming, O Lord, as we, as we make straight your way. Feed us as a shepherd and gather us like lambs into your arms. Hear these prayers of your faithful servants as we raise our voices together. O oh God, you speak of peace to your faithful people. Let truth spring up in your church. Awaken all leaders, inspire all the faithful, and guard us all who await the coming of your kingdom. Bless your whole church. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Reformed Episcopal Church of Spain. In the Episcopal Church, we pray for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and Craig Loya, our bishop. For St. Nicholas Parish in Richfield, we pray for Dana, our rector, and Kathleen, our assist assisting priest, and for the staff in Vestry of Nativity. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. Awaken, O Lord, the leaders of nations, those holding earthly power, that they will find in their hearts the grace and humility to truly serve and care for all citizens. Grant them wisdom and generosity. Restore peace and goodness in this and every land. Come, Lord Jesus. And hear our prayer. In this season of fading light, be with those whose hearts are hardened by the troubles and toils of life. Give us patience and kindness towards all our fellow beings. Let us look to the future in hope and confidence and not to fear the unknown as we await your coming among us. Come, Lord Jesus. And hear our prayer. O oh God, our maker and our keeper, sustain all your children in this time of pandemic. Bless our efforts to protect ourselves and others from this disease. Shine your holy light in our ways of worship and community. Heal and comfort those whom the disease has struck and be with us as we go on in the uncertain days ahead. Come, Lord Jesus. And hear our prayer. We ask your blessing among those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they may be strengthened and know your loving presence. We pray today for Josh and Sarah Waters and family, Debbie Moran, Tuca, Joyce and Jim Risser, Nick Thermos, Jackie, the Strandy family, Charlie and Patty Engram, all of the workers in the health field, Marva Barsky, Natalia Stetz, Jim Creighton, the Faber family, Megan and Nate Gooden, Sandy Beauchene, Megan, Mo Geiger, Sarge and Jane Kyle, Richard Brindell, Jason and Don, Marlene Heyman, Libby Jackson, Harold Denley, Eden Faber, Greg Schwartz, Lisa Mendoza, Jen Flanagan, Kim and Diane Bruce and family, Karen Manu and family, and Teresa May. 
Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for a holy and peaceful death and for all those whose lives are ending and for those who have died. Barbara Danley, Sandy, Sandy Obarski, Dan, Mercedes, Harold, and Signe and Martin. Come, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. And Christina, are there others on Zoom or Facebook? Yes. Prayers are requested for Raymond and Lillian. Prayers for Christine Nelson's father, recently diagnosed with cancer, had surgery, and is doing well. Pray for Liam and Lisa Mendoza, recovering from COVID. Lisa is pregnant and due on the 10th. Prayers are requested for Nathan Brandt, a friend from high school, recently diagnosed with cancer. Prayers for all in discernment. For William Bumbliss, who had surgery this week. And thanks for all your prayers for Neil's brother, who was discharged from the hospital. That's it. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. We know that with you one day is like a thousand years, O oh Lord. Come among us as we wait for your saving presence in our lives. In this Advent season, prepare for us your kingdom. Keep us steadfast and true. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Do we have birthdays or anniversaries or another opportunity to celebrate a blessing? Avalana's birthday. Avalana's birthday. Uh, Anne's birthday. And I didn't get that. Anne Malone's birthday. Anne Malone's birthday. Mary Ellen Ruth's birthday. <laughs> Go Mayor. <laughs> Mary Ellen Ruth's birthday. Okay. Well, let us pray a prayer of blessing upon these birthdays, Avalana, Mary, and Anne. Lord, we thank you for the gifts of each one of these women, for all that they bring into the lives of their families and into our life as a faith community. We ask you to go with them through the ups and downs in life as they navigate this pandemic and another new year of their life. Guide them, protect them, help them to know of your presence always. And we bless them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. One more prayer, Dana. Okay. Nate is having surgery this week, and Kathleen, what does it say? And Kathleen, as she heals from her broken leg. We pray for the healing that is needed and necessary for both Kathleen and for Nate. Lord, that you continue to be present to them and to their doctors and medical teams, as with all of the members of Nativity who are seeking medical care. We offer our prayer to you. Come, Lord Jesus. And hear our prayer. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, peace to you. Peace, peace. Oh, great. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. Peace, Mary Kay. Peace, Judy. So good to see everyone. Peace, Joyce. Peace, Dana. Peace, Nate. Now let us pray the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now our closing prayer. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. Alleluia. Amen. Go in safety, for you cannot go where God is not. Go in love, for God's love alone endures. Go in peace, for that is God's gift to those whose hearts and minds are in God's Son, Jesus. Go in hope, for it is in the Spirit that enlivens us and spurs us onward. The power of this one God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. go into the world. I know how much a tired and hurting world needs our strength and gladness. 
for there are deeds of compassion and courage that will never be done unless we do them. And there are words of hope and healing that will never be spoken unless we speak them. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have one last announcement important for you as you maybe are making your plans for Christmas. Our service here at Nativity will be Zoomed and placed on Facebook and later placed on YouTube. It will be um, recorded at 4 p.m. on Christmas Eve. I hope that you will be able to join us for that. Um, if you sign on at 3.40, we will be getting our carol sing at 3.40 and uh, our service at 4. We will be celebrating uh, the consecration of Eucharist next Sunday so that those elements will be available for you to either pick up or call us and let us know so that we can deliver the elements of consecrated bread and wine to you for us to consume together on Christmas Eve. I hope you enjoy your time in coffee hour. Have a great week.